How's it going everybody and welcome back to our Nexus dashboard series. As you can see I have all of the VMs down here powered up and ready to go and I've even got some uh, information over here about the uh, addressing scheme that we're going to be using as we move forward. Um, the only thing I haven't mentioned here is the VRF of what we're going to be using so actually I'll, uh, I'll come up with that here in just a moment. Okay so we're going to use VRF prod for our configuration but that's not really applicable at this moment. Uh, the, if you notice, we have switch 13, which is uh, duly attached through two interfaces on N3, uh, N3, Nexus 3. And what we're gonna go do is I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a port channel from a single Nexus switch to a non-Nexus switch. It could be a Nexus switch too, but this is how you do a port channel if you've got something attached. The reason for this specific example is in the event that you've got like an ESXi host or something like that and you've got uh, trunking that you're going to need to take advantage of. Um, I don't have the ability of running ESXi and virtual machines and things like that in my environment. So instead of being able to do that, the switch is going to simulate essentially an ESXi host and then we're going to do a VPC over here on Nexus 5 and 6 which switch 14. So I'll go through the configuration in Nexus dashboard first on N3, and then we'll go ahead and do the iOS config on the switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of the way. We're gonna come over here. I'm going to, um, on Nexus 3, let me go ahead and re refresh this. I might have to, probably have to log in. So go ahead and log in to Nexus dashboard. And on DC1, we're gonna dive into the fabric a little bit closely. Click on switches. Go to uh, N3, jump into that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to the interfaces tab. And for this interface, I'm gonna use 12 and 13. I am going to, on here, I'm going to say actions and say create interface. And the interface, the type is gonna be a port channel. I could also do a VPC. I could do a straight through fabric extender and active active facts, loopback, ethernet, SBI, all that stuff. I'm gonna choose a port channel. The device I'm gonna do this on is Nexus 3. Port channel ID could be whatever you want it to be. Now the policy here is gonna be, you can do a whole bunch of different options. So you can do a layer three port channel, you can do monitor port channel if you wanted it to do uh, monitoring on it, uh, access, dot one q tunnel, private VLAN, trunk host, so you have some options for what you want to do. We're obviously going to be choosing uh, that. So the port channel members that we're going to be choosing are going to be E113 and E112. So I'm going to say uh, E1 slash 12 through 13. The channel port mode is going to be active. BPD guard, I'm going to say no. Port type fast, that's fine. We're going to just choose default MTU. Allowed VLANs. I'm going to go ahead and just say all here because the fact that uh, we're going to have a couple of VLANs, but you can come in here. It's really going to be 10 and 10 through 11. So I could do 10 through 11. I could do that. Native VLAN, I'm not going to mess with that, but if I wanted to, I could create a native VLAN. A port channel description, I'm just going to say uh, N3 to switch 13 um, port channel. And that's pretty much it. If there was specific configuration that I wanted to apply to this, I could apply that right here. I'm gonna go ahead and say click save. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on deploy. And we're gonna see the, uh, the pending lines of config. You can see there's gonna be, it's gonna take those commands off. We're gonna create channel group 501 force mode active. The port channel itself is going to have the switch port, switch port mode trunk, and the reason why it's configured underneath the port channel and not underneath the member interfaces is because the member interfaces inherit whatever configuration is placed underneath the port channel. So it's a it's a win-win there. I'm going to go ahead and click on deploy config, get that rolled out. That should take only a moment to do. And then once that is complete, we will go ahead and configure switch 13. While we wait for that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in 
switch 13's config. I'm going to type in host name is going to be switch 13. I'm going to type interface range of gig 1 slash 2 through 3. Type in switch port, switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1Q, switch port mode of trunk. The channel protocol will be LACP. The channel group will be 13 mode of active. So there's that. And I'm going to do a show ether channel summary. We can see that it's up. And I'm going to go back over here to the dashboard, save that config. And what you'll see, let me go ahead and close this out, is port channel 501 is in sync. It says it's down currently, but let me go ahead and jump into that switch real quick and see what the show interface status. Trunk, we're gonna do a show port channel summary. Those interfaces, okay, so this is why it's important to validate at the CLI level as well, because even though the port channel is up and running and everything looks good, from a GUI perspective, it says that it's down. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. And see, it says it's still down. I'm not gonna take this as, uh, to, to heart. It is what it is, but that's essentially how you go about doing a port channel on a Nexus switch to a non-Nexus switch. All right, so now that this has been configured, I'm not too worried about the no operational members because I know at the switch level, it's good to go, oh, there it goes. It, take, it, took about a, it took about five minutes or so for it to uh, change its status. So um, and the reason why I wanted to take a minute, I paused while that process was happening. But what I wanna do is I want to go through and um, configure on the topology here, the right here on switch 13, I wanted to configure these first couple of interfaces um, with what they need to have for gig 0, 0, 1, 2, and 3, respectively, for these individual switches. Because in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through how to configure that stuff in Nexus Dashboard. So what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go to Global Config, I'm gonna get it out of the way. Type in uh, VLAN 10, name is VLAN 10. And then I'm gonna do VLAN 11. And I'm gonna type in um, interface. I'm gonna start off with VLAN 10. I'm gonna do one and three. Interface range, gig zero slash zero. And gig zero slash three. Switch port, access VLAN 10. Switch port mode of access. Spanning tree port, uh, port fast. And then I will do zero, zero, and zero, two. So now that we have everything configured, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into this range now. Um, I have to adjust for zero, zero, and zero, two. And then I'm gonna make this for VLAN 11, switch port mode, access, spanning tree, port fast. And show interface status. Uh, gig zero one, did I make a mistake there? Gig zero, oh, gig zero, gig zero zero. Oh, that's my fault. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm right. Um, let me go ahead and bring this out just a little bit so that it's easier to see. That's going to be far easier to tell what's going on here than the other way that I had it just set up. Um, so I've got gig zero two and gig zero zero are in VLAN 11, gig zero one and gig zero three. Did I just screw that up? I did. So I'll just do this and I'll adjust this one here. Switch port access VLAN 10. 
Then we'll do a show interface status. That looks better, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that config. And then what I'm gonna do is a show Mac address table dynamic. And we should see communication for that type of stuff coming up, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So now that I've got the uh, Switch 13 completely configured, I've got it on the port channel and all that type of stuff. In the next video, when I go through and dictate out how it's going to work from an operational perspective for the the total configuration that we're going to be putting together, explain the VRF, the, the how the VLANs work, the VNI, all that type of stuff, um, that will come into place and make much more sense when we get to that part of the config. With that being said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me. I'll catch all of you in the next video.